that's how I summarize everything that Helena does. <laughs> Me. This woman, honestly. <laughs> I'm so judgmental. Well, the secret is out. I have announced my favorite Helena monologue from A Midsummer Night's Dream. She has six monologues and my favorite is Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I love this monologue because it has so much room for comic choices and variety and your own interpretation. So in this video, I'm gonna do my usual line by line meaning breakdown, but I'm also gonna talk very briefly about the context and give you some acting choices that you might like to think about. Now, a lot of people don't even look at this monologue as a potential audition choice, but I love it for all the reasons that I mentioned before, and partly because it's not done as much as maybe how happy some or other some can be, or um, oh spite, oh hell. And it's a little bit shorter, so if you're newer to Shakespeare or or yeah, acting, then you can probably manage this one okay. It can also fall pretty well within a one minute limit if you need it to. Now the context for this monologue is that it is part of the massive scene where the lovers kind of, you know, go head to head, where the boys have woken up, the gentlemen I should say, have woken up and they've fallen for Helena due to some fairy juice. And Helena is all upset about it because, you know, she's upset about everything all the time. And she's already reacted with, oh, spite, oh, hell, monologue. And then, lo, she is one of this confederacy, monologue. And then she goes on to, good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. So that's what you've got to think about in terms of contest is actually there has already been a lot of whining and yelling and insulting Hermia, actually. And now she's saying, oh, don't be upset with me, despite the fact that she's actually already been really rude to her. She is quite a hypocrite. If you want to go further into Helena's character, I have a character analysis video that I've done before that should give you some things to think about. So I'll link that below in the description box as well. Something that you really need to think about for this monologue is that Hermia is currently being held back by the guys because Helena has insulted her and Hermia wants to fly at her and try and scratch her eyes out basically. So this whole monologue needs a little bit of energy to it because you're going to be slightly concerned that Hermia is about to scratch her eyes out. But also you've got to pull out all the stops to calm Hermia down. You're going to have to make the acting choice about whether she genuinely wants Hermia to forgive her when she's saying this monologue or is she just kind of in her own reflective kind of whinge moment? You can actually do a bit of both. You might decide that at some points she's really directing it at Hermia and other times she's having a moment to feel sorry for herself, which she does do that. But make sure you've got a clear choice, whether it's running all the way through that she genuinely directs everything at Hermia and wants to connect with her, or whether it's much more about how she's feeling about these things. And that reminds me of another thing that you want to think about. You've got Lysander and Demetrius there. How much of this, what she's saying, is actually for their benefit and particularly for Demetrius's benefit? When she's talking about Demetrius, he is right there and he is, you know, in love with her because of the you know, spell, but she thinks that he's just playing with her again. So there's actually a lot to play on there. You can really get into layers of nuance and thinking about who you're delivering something to or who that line is for can really shape that. The really big thing that you need to think about for this monologue is beats. You need to divide it up into sections because otherwise it just ends up being a big wash of like, please, please feel sorry for me, where, where, where. And you don't want that. What you want is a lot of variety and nuance. And this monologue has the potential for that, but you have to do the work and make clear decisions. So your task is to go through and divide the monologue into sections. And I would personally think about what sort of strategy is she playing in each section to make Hermia come around to her way of thinking, to either make Hermia calm down or forgive her or feel sorry for her or whatever it is. Look at her strategies, her tactics, her actions. You can give it a verb, you can give it a summary, you can give it whatever you want, but make sure it's usually every two to three lines she changes tactic and it needs to be clear that you are changing tactic. Otherwise, wash of emotion. So what I'll do for you in a moment when I do the line by line meaning breakdown, I will give you an indication of 
where I think the beats fall. So you can have a bit of a think about yourself. And after the breakdown, I'll give you some ideas or some different strategies you can use. And I'll do an example reading so you can kind of see them being put into place. Right, so it's time for the breakdown. Woo -woo! On the breakdown train. Now, this monologue, is, it's not hard language, so it's not difficult to understand, but you need to make sure that you're being specific about what she's saying in each tiny little phrase point, because again, otherwise it becomes a wash. Every time she adds a little bit more information, there's a reason for that. So make sure each time she adds a half a sentence or a couple of lines, there's something different or something more important about that little addition. Let's take a look. So she starts with, good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. Self-explanatory. I evermore did love you, Hermia, to ever keep your counsels. Now, this is something she's just talked about before. She's talking about, I always kept your secrets, which she did not, you know, which she's just going to realize in a minute. Never wronged you. So again, so these are separate things. She said, I always kept your secrets. I've never done anything wrong by you. So make sure that they're two separate thoughts, not just a wash. Then something that's important here is to go, let that arrive, let that thought arrive that she's been saying, oh, I've never done anything wrong by you. And then she remembers, oh, I did do that one thing. I, I may have told Demetrius that you were stealing away with Lysander. Let that arrive. That little moment of recognition can make the kind of detailed acting that will really set you apart from other actors in the room who are just going blah, 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 blah. Go, let us see you remember without overacting. <laughs> so then she remembers, save that. So just in case you're not familiar, save that means like except for that, save that in love unto Demetrius because I loved Demetrius. I told him of your stealth unto this wood that you came to the wood. He followed you for love, I followed him. Okay, so notice how I'm phrasing it there. It's fairly self-explanatory, but what you've actually got here is a bunch of antitheses. So an antithesis and an antithesis. And what he's setting up here, what Shakespeare is setting up for us is the he and you and I and him. Those are the things that you need to emphasize. But he hath chid me hence. Now chid means like chided basically. So he was like telling her off, which made her go away and threatened me to strike me, spurn me, nay, to kill me too. So already in this section, you might want to think about strategies. About why is she bringing this up? This is another ploy for her to get sympathy, right? And make something of all these words. They're very evocative. And now, so you will let me quiet go to Athens will I bear my folly back and follow you no further. So you let me go quietly. I am going to go back home. I'm going to take my silliness, my folly, bear my folly back. It's like take my silliness back home and I won't trouble you anymore, okay? That's the vibe there. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. And that, oh my God, the ultimate like, ooh, <laughs> this girl has got problems. And it always cracks me up that Hermia responds with, why get you gone? Who is that hinders you? She's like, why are you still here? Get lost then. Right, so I'm gonna do a reading for you here and I'm really going to try and show you the changes between each beat. And just a reminder to never ever copy the way that someone else does a monologue. This is just information for you so you can make your own choices. Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you. Save that in love unto Demetrius. I told him of your stealth unto this wood. He followed you for love, I followed him. But he had chid me hence and threatened me to strike me, spurn me, they, to kill me too. And now, so you will let me quiet go to Athens while I bear my folly back and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am? So I sort of turned the end into a bit of a questionnaire. It doesn't necessarily need to be like that, but it can be an offer of her going, oh, look, I'm so terrible. Or it could just be a bit more restrained. You see how simple and how fond I am. And just let it follow on from the beat before. Lots of choices. And that's why I love this monologue. Really, there should like never be two performances of this that are the same. You want to go for nuance, so do the work, do the character work, so you're making choices that feel right to you. Get it in the body 
and try and make sure that your voice isn't all on the one level because that's very common if you're getting stuck in one particular pattern. If it's no wash of emotion, it's all gonna come out like this and you don't want that. I have lots of other Helena videos that might be useful to you. I will link the character analysis on the screen for you now in case you wanna have a look at it. Otherwise, check in the description box below for some other suggestions. And other than that, good luck with all your auditions and I'll see you in the next video.